Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today um, I'm making sourdough bread and I'm recording it, the process, for a family member of mine. Um, she was wondering how I do it and I figured I'll just make a YouTube video and share with you guys how I make my sourdough bread. Um, it's not like, it, it, I mean it is all day, but it's not like tedious all day thing. You just have to set your timers and make sure that you are following the tips and tricks that I'm sharing with you and just make sure you have your timer set. Um, I started at 8.30 this morning making it. So I started at 8.30 and then two hours from there I did something else. And then two hours from there I did another step. Um, so you do have to have your timer set and it is kind of an all day thing. So I started at 8.30 and then my first loaf of bread is usually done around four o'clock um, because this recipe, you get two loaves out of it. So I have one at, at like four it's done and then another one at like five o'clock. Um, Cause for me, they take almost an hour in the Dutch oven, okay? Um, so you will need though a sourdough starter. Um, let me get mine and show you what mine looks like. I've had mine for a few months now and I just remembered to keep feeding it or if I feel like I'm not gonna be baking in a while, then I'll put it into the fridge and feed it once a week. Or if I know I'm gonna be baking a lot, then I keep it on my counter and feed it every day. So this is my starter. It's nice and bubbly. And I've had this one for a few months now. And I just leave this on the counter and you have a loose lid on it. You don't wanna have it sealed because you want air coming in there um, you want to build that good bacteria in there to make it sour. Um, so I'm going to experiment with this one that I have and just put a towel over it and see if it rises even better for tomorrow because tomorrow I'm making more bread and then Saturday I'm making more bread for um, family members. So there's that one. That's just a regular one. And then I just started... This one's a gluten-free one. I just started it yesterday, so I don't know if it's gonna turn out, we'll see. I've never made a gluten-free one before, but real quick. Okay, so real quick on how to make your own starter. This is what I've done. Um, there's a ton of different ways to start it. You do what you feel like you're doing. Um, you can also buy some off of Etsy or there's a few people on Instagram that I can recommend that you can buy from them and kind of follow their methods. There's one farmer, ballerina farmer on Instagram. I follow her and I have followed her steps for sourdough and it hasn't failed me yet. So that is what I'm sharing with you today. That's where I got it from. But anyway, to have your starter, what I started out with is like my normal starter, not this one. Um, for a normal one, what I did was a half a cup of flour and a third cup of lukewarm room temperature water. Filtered is best, but if it's out of my fridge, it's gonna be too cold, so I just use the faucet and it's worked fine. Um, but filtered is best. But anyway, I put it into the mason jar and I stir with a wooden spoon. You don't wanna stir with a metal spoon or anything like that, because it could kill your starter. You wanna do it with a wooden spoon. So that's what I did. I just took the end of a wooden spoon and stirred it up, and it's gonna look like thick pancake batter. That's like the best way that I could put it. So it's gonna look a thick pancake batter, and then I just place the little lid on top you don't want anything sealed. You want air coming through there. You want to build some of that good bacteria in there to make it sour. And you want it to be bubbly like this one. See how it's bubbly? When it's bubbly like that, it's active. Now it's not going to be bubbly day one and day two. You might start seeing it bubble day three, day four. Your starter is going to take about five to seven days for it to get really bubbly and active and you want it to like really double in size. So this is day two, so it should be ready, like maybe to here, it should be ready. And then you just follow the steps and um, recipe that I'm sharing with you on this video, okay? So that's how you can make your own starter. If you don't feel like making your own starter and you want to purchase from someone, I will link below the two ladies that you can purchase from 
They have um, really good quality sourdough starter and their tips and methods are very good as well. So I will link them down below for you to try or you can make your own, that's what I did. I uh, made my own because I was impatient and didn't feel like waiting for shipping. Um, so you guys can just make your own, okay? So anyway, this sourdough recipe that I have is your starter plus more water, more flour that you're gonna need, and then salt. That's Those are the ingredients that you need. So it's your starter mix mixed with um, water and flour and then the next step you will see in just a minute is adding in salt that's all you need you need that and pretty much your free day so you can do it on a weekend if that works best for you because it's going to be all day um, you just need to set your timers and remember to come back and you know fold and stretch and all that kind of stuff so anyway this is the video and we're going to get started on making some sourdough bread all right, so right now I am mixing 250 grams of the starter, 735 grams of like lukewarm room temperature water, and 1,000 grams of flour, and I'm just mixing it with my hands until it all comes together. Okay, it's all mixed together, so I'm just gonna sit it on the countertop cover it and it's going to sit there for two hours and then I will add salt and pinch and fold. All right, it's been two hours so I'm going to put some salt in. This is the salt that I use, so about 24, 25 grams of salt. Pinch it in. And then we'll fold it once this is kind of pinched in. And then just kind of stretch, fold for a few minutes. So it's, the dough is sticky, but I can still pull it and stretch it. All right, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna cover it again for another two hours and then we'll do some more stretching and folding. All right, so it's been two hours. Now I'm going to divide it and stretch it and shape it and then you leave it on the counter for 20 minutes and then you do it again. You stretch it, not as rough as the first time. You just stretch it a little bit fold it and roll it and shape it, and then you put it into your proofing basket um, for two hours, either in the freezer, or just like in a cold place, so your garage could work too. So, this is what it looks like. Just dump it out, divide it in half as best as I can. Try to get all of it out of my bowl. Okay, I don't flour the uh, surface either. So I just take it and start folding it out. And cut up all the directions.
you got to like my for me I try to get it kind of thin. I don't want big lumps anywhere. Okay? And then I just fold it. So you fold one side and then I'm going to fold the other side. And then I take one end and I just roll it up. So this time around it's going to be sticky, but after the 20 minutes of leaving it out on the counter, it won't be as sticky and you just kind of roll it and fold it under for a couple minutes. So you roll and fold under and rotate it. Set it aside, and I'm gonna do the next one. Okay. So I'm just gonna stretch it out. So I'm gonna stretch and get it thin without like tearing it. And do the same thing. Okay, then I leave it on the counter for 20 minutes and then so this side up, when I go to stretch and fold again, I will have this side up on the table side. So I will flip it upside down because this is going to be a little bit of like a harder surface on this side and then it won't stick as much on here. So I'm gonna wait 20 minutes, do the same thing, stretch it out a little bit, fold on each side, roll it and shape it, and then I put it in the proofing um, basket. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. It's just sitting here on the counter. So I'm going to stretch and fold and shape it again and then put it into proofing baskets, okay? So it's gonna be a little sticky again, but it shouldn't be as sticky as the first time that you stretch and fold. It should be a little bit easier kind of to work with. Um, but this time around, I'm not gonna stretch it as far as I did the first time. Because it's gonna wanna go back to its ball shape. So you just kind of Okay, so I'm gonna fold it again. And roll it. So I'm just rolling it and shaping it into a ball. And then I'm going to put it into the proofing basket. So the proofing basket I did line with flour. And then I'm just going to put like, one, not a shower cap, but one of those like elastic covers that you can put over bowls. I'm just going to put over that and then I'm going to stick it in my fridge for two hours. Okay, so there's my ball and putting it into my basket. Okay, I'm going to do the next one.
online on Amazon. So they're two different shapes. Not a big deal because when I go to bake it, I'll kind of reshape this one into a ball again, score it, and then bake it, and it's not a big deal. So these are the ones that I got. Like, um, this is a stretchy cover that I put over it. And you can put it in your garage if it's cold or in a fridge for two hours. Okay, so it's been about two hours and uh, of proofing in the fridge. So I'm going to take the dough and put it on some parchment paper. And then the parchment paper dough is gonna go in my Dutch oven. I have the Dutch oven preheating at 450 and has been preheating for about 25 minutes. You want your Dutch oven really nice and hot. <laughs> You don't want to put your dough into a cold Dutch oven because it won't bake and rise very nicely. You want the Dutch oven to be nice and hot. Okay, so I'm just kind of reshaping it a little bit, rubbing the rest of the flour on it, and then I'm going to score it. Um, I got this off of Amazon with the baskets. I will link this below. Um, I don't like this tool though. I'm gonna take the razor off of it though. It just is easier for me to um, do a little scoring design. All right, so this is what I'm gonna use. Comes with the little razor blades. I'm just gonna score a design. You can score whatever design you want. Um, this will help it rise and it just looks really pretty too. Okay, so after 35 minutes, it looks like this. It's gonna go back in the oven for 10 more minutes, uncovered. All right, it is done. So I did 35 minutes covered, took it out, 10 minutes uncovered, 4.50, and it is done. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other. All right, so one loaf down, one more loaf to go. So I'm gonna end the video here as I make my other loaf. But that is how I make my sourdough bread. So I started it at 8.30 this morning. It is now 3.45 and one is done and I'm gonna do another one um, in the oven. So average, it takes about 45 minutes to bake. Remember you want it at 4.50, preheat that Dutch oven so it's nice and hot when you put your first loaf in. Um, and you're gonna do it um, for 35 minutes covered and then 10 more minutes uncovered. So that's it, bye guys.